okay, looks like I'm good to go. Okay, uh, welcome to Orange, uh, New South Wales. Welcome to Swedge meeting here in, um, in Orange. So, Swedge, the Central West Exploration discuss Discussion Group, if you're wondering. Um, and we're here today for a technical meeting uh, with the support of SGS. So, thanks very much to SGS for uh, making this happen tonight. Um, Jeff McLean, who's the local SGS person here, is un unable to join us because he's unwell, but he's um, been instrumental in making it happen tonight. Thanks also to Jessica for having uh, this broadcast online. So welcome to all those people online as well that are here. So, and also to John Woods, our presenter tonight from SGS. Um, I'll uh, move to the first. Um, a reminder that the discoveries in the Tasmanite Mines and Wines Conference is on later this year, so early September in Albury. Registration is now open, uh, so I recommend getting to that because it definitely is the best conference for mineral exploration and discoveries in Eastern Australia. So I'll now hand over to Mark Rundle, who will talk about some other training opportunities coming up this year, and also to introduce John Woods. Thanks, Martin. Uh, I'll just mention on the uh, discoveries in the Tasmanides, the field trip will be from Melbourne. Is that better? Thank you. Uh, from Melbourne, and we'll be uh, looking at gold deposits in Victoria. Uh, there's also a series of workshops as well. And uh, what I'm talking about here is a series of online workshops and one face-to-face. -face. I don't know whether people here are familiar with Richard Lilly, but he's done a phenomenal job of getting nine workshops organised over the next couple of months, uh, going from porphyry systems uh, through ore deposit textures, breaches, an introduction to exploration for people who may well be non-geologists, uh, looking at gossens, there's a one Face to face, where they're actually going to be uh, doing work on QGIS and uh, SCAN workshop, one on exploration, geochemistry, uh, and uh, Lee Rankin uh, doing a two day online <coughs> workshop on MA interpretation. And finally, the ninth one that he's organised is on team systems. Uh, and if you're interested in those, please get in contact with Richard. The only one I've actually got any details on is the one that I'm actually doing with Richard myself, uh, which is the exploration one, which uh, full registration is 600 for two days, AIG members of $400 and students of $60. So, uh, may I please now, and I'm sure I say it's my pleasure to introduce John Woods, uh, who will be speaking to us today from SGS. Uh, John is the new technology manager for SGS, and that's a global role within uh, the company. He's a geologist and a chemist, and has over 30 years working within industry, primarily within the mineral sector. Uh, but he's uh, also done some work, uh, dare I say, with the oil and gas sector as well. However, he's identified a number of new technologies uh, for laboratory and field applications, including the use of portable x-ray and infrared based systems. Using artificial intelligence and data analytics to produce quantitative methodologies, John has been able to apply these systems for interpretive strategies in both process control and resource assessments globally. Uh, operational successes have included the application of FTIR, Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy Systems, in the quantification of minerals and critical so please, could you join me in welcoming John to the front? Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the introduction, and uh, thank you for inviting me here today to speak to you about um, some of the technologies that we are developing at SGS, and also um, some pre-existing technology, which um, it would be good to remind you about for exploration. So, two main topics today I'm going to talk about. One is MMI, mobile metal ions, uh, which is used um, in the exploration stages for identifying targets. And then I'm going to talk about the fast technologies, which are some of the new cutting edge technologies that we can use for a variety of different applications.
applications including um, elemental and mineralogical analysis um, that are very rapid, can be used um, on site um, and also fit in with uh, green strategies in that they don't require things like uh, gas supplies or, or high energy contents. So, um, tell you a little bit about SGS first of all. We are a global organisation um, with over 2,000 officers and um, in the order of a hundred thousand uh, employees and we have a number of laboratories here in Australia um, including um, the development of a lab here in Orange um, as well as um, our main laboratories being in Perth um, and uh, Townsville. Um, so, first of all I'll talk about the uh, mobile metal ions. So this is a technology which has been around for about sort of 10, 15 years um, and it's a way of identifying targets um, without the need for um, a, a straight off drilling program. Um, it uses the fact that um, you have ions which are bound to uh, particles and they move through the column, um, through the geological column to the surface where you can take samples and analyze them and identify hotspots. So um, it's a specialized leaching technology. Uh, so you have a mineralized deposit at depth and you're wanting to identify it, um, ideally through um, soil analysis at the surface. So what we do is we take samples from just below the organic layer, um, so a consistent depth uh, with one of our special kits, which is plast all plastic based, so there's no um, metals content to that. We carry out a special uh, leaching process and identify a very wide range of elements. And that we can then take that data and produce a heat map um, to very successfully identify not only where, where your um, deposit is at depth, but also the type of deposit and mineralization that we're looking at. So it works on the principle that you have elements bound to the surfaces of particles, uh, soil particles, and um, as you have water flowing through the system, as we have at depth, these um, elements dissociate, move up through the column, and then we have a specialized process for identifying and um, quantifying them. So um, we're looking really at um, bound elements, works particularly well for those sorts associated with DMS deposits, but we've also applied it in gold um, and even recently in lithium uh, with a high degree of success. So um, bound metal ions, um, we can analyze them at very low levels so we can identify even very um, relatively low levels of mineralization and we have two different um, suites. We have a standard high level suite uh, which analyzes the sort of the main VMS type deposits and a low level suite uh, for identifying um, gold. So we're looking at um, the unbound metal ions um, moving from the source up through layers um, for um, identifying direct mineralization by hotspot analysis. So um, we've also been looking at some new extracts now with NMI. Uh, these will allow us to more effectively um, extract uh, the precious metals. So originally NMI was largely based around your sort of standard um, base metal type analysis, but we're now able to identify um, gold deposits very effectively and also, uh, we've also now moved into the lithium sector as well. <clears throat> so the MMI analysis, the basic suites, uh, consists of a wide range of elements, including some of the rare earths. And the MMI plus, we're now able to identify very low uh, levels of detection, including for elements like chromium and vanadium. Uh, the advantage of MMI is that it picks up the most subtle of features features that you would probably struggle to identify if you were doing standard sort of geomagnetic surveys or um, <clears throat> many of the more sort of standard approaches, uh, standard soils analysis, for example, 
uh, by Apple Reader Digest, you're going to get so much of the other elements effectively clouding the issue of what you've, what you've actually got as mobile. And the beauty of this is it's a specialized digest which is only identifying those mobile ions. And in only identifying those mobile ions, you are clearly identifying what's going on at depth. <clears throat> so the limits of detection compared to a soil analysis are very, very low. In fact, we're usually talking um, one to two orders of magnitude lower. So one to two orders of magnitude improvement in the sensitivity in identifying um, in-depth <clears throat> materials. So if you pick stuff up at very low levels, you get very clear indicators. There's none of this, you know, trying to identify something that may be something that, say, 5 ppm or something that 10 ppm. We have significant peaks which we are clearly able to identify. <clears throat> and it gives you a clear um, hotspot um, identification. Sampling itself is, is very, very simple to do. Um, you simply dig uh, below the organic uh, layer, so typically greater than um, half a metre in depth. Uh, take a sample using our specialised samples kit and send the samples uh, through to ourselves for the analysis. And then we can interpret the software, uh, the software system, should I say, or you can interpret it yourself to identify um, those hotspots. And the field sampling procedures um, are quite, quite simple. You're only looking at two to three hundred grams of material. We're not talking about having to take um, you know, drill deposits. Um, and we get very sharp anomalies. Uh, they are seen directly above or on the up dip um, of mineralization. Um, we can identify uh, commodity, commodity element responses. Uh, we have very few issues with anomalies. That's particularly because we have this um, specialized leaching process. So we don't have the issue of, with the standard source analysis, of, um, as I say, very little difference between the elemental contents, clear peaks. And uh, we can also identify even over weathered or transported systems. And the data is reproducible over time. So here's an example showing some of the hotspot anomalies. We've also got a new um, MMI developed system, and I'm afraid it has the rather <laughs> interesting title of DOCS. So it's Degree of Geochemical Similarity. So um, it's effectively, um, if you're from, if you're doing work, um, sedimentary rocks is what I would call provenance testing. So you're identifying um, geological, large-scale geological features with similar elemental contents or similar properties. So this allows you to identify uh, regions, regions of interest, uh, regions of interest which may not have already been identified. So where you might want to look at uh, going for gold analysis next, or lithium, or whatever the element of interest may be, by understanding those geological structures, uh, which can come out of this type of analysis, um, you can look at where you might want to go. Okay, um, next part of the talk, I'm going to talk about our um, FAST technologies. Now, these are some of the new technologies that SGS has been rolling out globally. Um, these technologies uh, allow us to do analysis in the field. So you can actually have analysis next to your drill rig, or you can have a mobile sample preparation unit, um, which is a mobile unit allowing you to prepare samples and analyze in the field. Um, or you can send the samples back to our main laboratories. Uh, the advantages of this technology is that it is, as the name suggests, very fast. Um, we're talking about dealing with hundreds of samples a day. So, as you can imagine, that allows you to make decisions on where you're drilling there and then. So, the fast technology is the time I'm going to discuss and the type of um, developing with SGS. Uh, and the SGS teams are Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, which is a little about all I know. Um, but it's a great bit of technology, um, originally from the pharmaceutical sector of all things, where it was used for identifying drugs um, and also for what we call mineral excipients. So that's the minerals when you, when you have the pills from, from the pharmacy, 
most of that pill is actually mineral. Gypsum is quite, quite popular, um, and only a small amount is the drug. So a lot of the pharmaceutical companies not only need to identify that you've got the drug present, but they also need to understand what mineral it's based in. So the principle that you could identify minerals using Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy was there, and that's now been brought forward to be able to provide um, semi-quantitative, and indeed in some cases fully quantitative, mineralogical analysis. And Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy works on power bonds wobble. So it's very good for minerals which have, I suppose we call wobbly bond structures. So things like your clay minerals, your alteration minerals. So the things that XRD struggles with. It's also very good at dealing with minerals which have orientation effect issues. So you might catch these minerals where orientated one way, gets one result, orientated another way, gets a different result in an XRD because of the way the XRD works. So good microcontents, good clay mineral contents, but it's also very good for most of the other main minerals you're going to be interested in, say your quartz contents, your feldspars. Um, you can use it statistically also to look at um, where things like gold is present or not present by looking at, at the relationship between mineralogy and gold contents. Um, it can be used in some cases for elemental analysis where you have an element with a very specific bond type. So we have done some work um, which is still um, being finalised in the lithium sector where you can get things like lithium contents um, in spodumene um, using Fourier transform infrared. Um, in the bauxite sector, uh, it's already utilised very successfully um, for identifying elemental contents, uh, namely your, your total alumina and your total silica. But because it's also uh, looking at um, the other sort of mineralogical lead properties, you can also get things like um, available alumina and reactive silica, as well as the organic content, the oxalate content, which is another key point uh, for the bauxite market. Um, for iron ore, um, it's very good for identifying the key iron ore minerals. So when you're looking at, um, for example, milling properties, hardness properties, uh, and this also applies for any ore type that you are grinding up um, because you can do a very quick and effective um, analysis of those mineral contents, including those very soft minerals, which you would struggle with by other technologies. And um, you can start to look at things like brittleness indices, hardness indices, and the effects um, with METS properties on um, flotation cells, and also viscosity as well. So we've got, um, and this is something we've done, for example, in the gold sector, and also in the tin sector, um, where there's, there's key aspects for processing, and I would say I'm not a METS guy, so I won't claim to be an expert in that, but we've been able to use the AI-based predictive modeling um, to work out those key METS properties uh, using the FTIR. Okay, the other, the other technologies we've uh, been doing a lot more work with uh, is portable XRF. Uh, many of you may already be familiar with uh, portable XRF for um, elemental analysis, but we've been doing much more advanced modeling uh, with the PXRF so that we can detect a wider range of elements um, to much uh, lower levels. And we've also been using, again, this elemental data to predict properties, etc. In combination with the PXRF, we've also been working with a uh, company called Detector, um, which allows us to do gold assays. Um, we're talking about gold assays down to somewhere in the order of 5 ppb. So it's a specialised extractive technique, and that extractive technique effectively concentrates the gold, and then you can analyse all the gold with the PXRF. You can also use that PXRF um, to do your standard PXRF analysis at the same time, so you get effectively two for the price of one. Um, other technologies we've been working with are um, PNIR. This is a kind of more simplified version of the infrared analysis, and that's really for looking at 
rapid semi-quantitative determination of mineralogy, um, but we have um, predictive um, AI-based technologies now, which allow us to give uh, relative concentrations of a much wider range of minerals, huge range of minerals, certainly enough to look at the complexities of um, alteration halos and scar deposits. Uh, we have uh, the hyperspectral and EDX core scanning technologies, uh, which obviously you can get detailed core analysis, so you can get a detailed mineralogical log, take high resolution images, and you can also combine it with um, XRF technology to give you elemental contents as well. With some of the high resolution imaging, you can also start to look at things like um, crystal structures or grain structures, depending on the sort of material that you're looking at. And finally, we're doing, um, which sort of is touched on in all of these, a lot more with data modeling. So we do a lot more with um, artificial intelligence-based data modeling, um, partial least squared mathematical modeling, and um, eigenvector plots as well for looking at relationships between minerals and uh, things like gold and other, base metal, other metals. So these technologies have different applications depending on the project requirements, and the stage of development of the technology packages are developed to reflect these varying needs. So what we can do is we can look at what you need, and we can effectively provide you with a package of technology which will provide you with the answers that you need, and we can provide you rapidly as well. So um, the technology that we're looking at is readily deployable, um, it's robust and reliable. Um, as I say, they don't require uh, complex digest systems. Uh, they don't require, require gas supplies. Uh, very minimal maintenance. Um, a lot of them, <clears throat> as um, one of my colleagues uh, has described it, is push button get banana. Um, and it's uh, suitable for operation by um, a wide range of, of um, personnel. Um, we can train technologists to utilize it, or geoscientists. Uh, and it's capable of generating a lot of data very quickly. Um, to give you an example, a PXRF or an FTIR can easily get through 700 samples a day. So you can keep up with your drilling campaign. And um, all of these technologies are able to run off portable generators. Indeed, uh, in many cases, you can even run them off the power supply in the back of your ute. So um, the FAST technologies are all about um, looking at all of the aspects of the um, exploration cycle. Primarily, we use them for exploration, but you can also use them um, for feasibility studies. Um, you can also use them for MET controls and um, assist you in uh, identifying sort of how you want to do your, your mineral processing down the line. And we can use a variety of different sample types. Uh, we can deal with cores, um, RC chips, or in case of some analysis, we can um, deal with pulps. So the PNIR technology is designed to work around um, core and RC samples. So that's why for the mineralogy, it's kind of semi-quantitative. Uh, the EDAX systems, that's the core scanning, they're designed primarily to work around core, but they can also be used with RC. Um, the NIR EDAX-based systems, again, we're looking at cores and um, RC. The FTIR is designed to work on pulps, so we do have to pulp the sample in order to provide you with the analysis. Um, the detector system, that works on um, effectively RC, RC chips and uh, for providing the gold contents. So, um, we routinely apply these in our mobile sample preparation units. Um, that allows us to have things like the, the, the grinding facilities for providing uh, for, the PX, for the FTIR. It also provides um, a better um, product for the PXRS to look at. And you can also incorporate the detector or use because that as a sample extraction system, uh, and you'll get better results from your PNAR Cyrus um, software for semi quantitative mineral ID work. Or you can send samples to our main laboratories, 
where we have automated uh, PXRF, FTIR, and PNIR systems. So that allows you to get through hundreds or indeed thousands of samples a day. So FTIR, samples do have to be pulverized, and you can provide yourself with a, a mineral mark. Um, routinely, these are used for identifying alteration halos. Uh, in the gold mark, you can be looking at um, things like serpentine, um, clay mineral contents. Uh, sometimes for an alteration index, you'll be looking at total feldspars over total clays. Um, you can identify different rock types. And um, if you're dealing with the bauxite market, obviously you can look at things like the erective and bagels and luminous, uh, your lithium contents, um, and um, it's considered to be quantitative to be semi-quantitative. We routinely, if we're looking at doing a large-scale project, we would calibrate against either XRD or TMA. And we have the quality control laboratories which have XRD and TMA to uh, basically do the calibration against. So a couple of typical suites here. Uh, a generic suite is really designed to cover a sort of a reasonable mix of minerals. Um, the sort of thing that you could apply for, for most applications, but we can also tailor the suites to make them more appropriate for uh, specific ore body types of various igneous body suites. I've got obviously the lithium suite you see here, bauxite suites, iron ore suites, and we can tailor a suite to pretty much whatever um, you want. The PXRF, um, they come in a few different forms. Uh, we have the self contained bench top or gun style. Um, they, you do need to matrix match those if you want to get reasonable elemental contents. And, um, they can screen for up to 44 different elements on a pulp, usually from the range of magnesium to uranium. Uh, if you're looking at a benchtop instrument, that can go as far up as sodium. And we report data routinely in uh, CSV format. So this is the benchtop unit, and this is a little bit more powerful uh, and allows you to go as far up as sodium. So if you wanted to do um, using elemental contents for rock typing, or you want to know things about sodium feldspars, then uh, you'd probably have to move up to the bench top unit. But both of these units are easily deployed in mobile sample preparation units. Um, and certainly in the case of the um, previous unit, it can be um, utilized in a unit. So we can have a pretty high range of, um, of elements we can identify. Uh, we've recently been, as I say, expanding our suite of elements. We've been able to reduce our um, limits of detection, uh, some of them down, heading towards the, you know, the hundreds of PPM levels. And um, we are also <coughs> going to be releasing surely suites specifically associated for the rare earths, which we understand is a very um, in-pub commodity of interest. So that will be um, released shortly. So we've got exploration samples for soil fractions, we've got a standard 44 element screening. So it depends on what you want as to what sort of suite you might go for. Uh, the detector, now uh, this is using um, our PXRF system with a specialized leaching process. So it takes um, in the order of 24 hours to, for turnaround to give yourself a uh, low level gold content. Um, silver may be added within the next 12 months. And you can still use that same instrument to do a range of standard elemental analysis. So deliverables uh, for the PXRS and uh, for the detector system are same day uh, gold contents. Gold is uh, actually a little bit moved on from now. It's actually 5 PPB equivalent, uh, oh, sorry, 40 PPB validated, 5 PPB, PPB indicative. Uh, gold contents. Um, we can get good gold contents even where you have nugget gold. <coughs> uh, we have simple infill preparation and it's um, put reportable in our LIM system. The uh, PNNR system, so these, uh, this is near infrared. Uh, this can identify and be used on uh, rock chips and core 
and is a um, semi-quantitative mineralogical analysis system. And um, the advantages are that you get a wide range of, of minerals very quickly without having to grind up the sample. Large suite of uh, minerals there, including um, an appreciable number of those associated with um, ultra matrix and also um, altered systems. We can uh, use these systems in field or in a portable laboratory um, with our rapid analysis system, so where we actually analyze the samples through bags, so, so that we don't have to have all the problems of uh, separating samples out and get a pretty decent um, rapid throughput um, direct full drilling programs. And we have um, a number of different um, approaches to this. This is the Gerda system, which is a little bit more um, complex. And you put the samples into trays, and this allows you to get a far more uh, detailed analysis, both by PNLR or by uh, PXRF. And as I say, pretty decent uh, range of elements that you can get, certainly enough for um, most BMS work. And, um, and that's from a, a, say, a rapid analysis system. Uh, the PNIR, um, we can use it effectively as a core scanning system. So you can start to look at, um, with your core samples, the, um, the mineral distribution, and combine that with the PXRF for the elemental distribution. And um, all of this data can be incorporated into our geological modeling uh, systems. So we can use our AI-based um, geological models to produce models from that data and uh, produce predictive models on uh, where future drilling campaigns and future uh, mining operations um, can occur. And these use machine learning. So, um, finally, I'd like to talk about the technologies we have under development. Uh, we have the LIP uh, IQ, which is a hyperspectral analysis uh, opportunity to develop that for the gold, bauxite, and iron ore sector. So, this is taking uh, lithological information to the next level um, for um, predictive um, studies. The geostat um, can be used, uh, you can effectively outsource to ourselves. Um, for uh, geological modeling um, and also satellite data modeling. Uh, the on-site lithium analysis, we are currently um, working with the PLIF system, so that allows us to get lithium contents uh, without the need for ICP or, um, or AA. So you can have a um, small unit getting lithium content, getting your uh, main elements of interest and all of the mineralogical uh, minerals of interest for on-site lithium um, at the speed at which you are operating. The um, all explore we are looking at that for, this is for 3D elemental distribution. So we can actually, this isn't looking at the surface of the core, or the surface of RC chips, this is actually looking um, high energy x-ray which actually looks at the structure Within. So, so how your natural grains or your crystals are, are orientated, the elemental contents. So it's a very good way of looking at rare earth distribution or gold distribution. And um, finally, uh, the LIBS um, system for liquid brine analysis, that's the system that we use um, over in South America, um, where we have lithium brines. And again, we're looking at a rapid way of getting uh, lithium content without the need for an ICP. Okay, so just um, a little bit about the analytical technologies. Um, the lithium content you can get from an FTIR. Um, you can also get the mineral contents, the confirmation of analysis by XRD. And this is really looking about what sort of the equivalent technologies would be. PXRF, equivalent, obviously, XRF, the counter checks um, for um, iron ore. Again, you're looking at FTIR and PXRF, rare earths. We can look at the um, XRF systems. Bauxite is a combination of PXRF and FTIR. For gold, uh, we'll be looking at a combination of FTIR 
and uh, PXRF, the possible portable uh, PPD. Uh, the battery metals, um, FTIR, and PXRF, and we have various other sort of systems for more mixed assets. Okay, um, I'd like to open the floor up for questions, please. Any questions? John, which is with the MMI, those sort of water content or the you know, saturation of the soil impact on the um, forming of those ions to absorb all the reducibility of the sampling? Okay, so the question is does um, water content um, impact um, the effectiveness of MMI? Mm -hmm. um, certainly, if you have more water in a system, a higher ground water table, you'll get a more rapid um, flow of metal ions. But as far as actually identifying where you get your, your peaks of the positions, um, no, it doesn't. So it's still identified. We've, we've worked the system very effectively, for example, in Canada, where you've got obviously a lot more water, a much higher water table, and you still get very good um, peak identification, um, even though, say, there's more water in the system. You show images of containers and things like that that um, obviously require a bit of a setup. Presumably, some of these techniques that we use to keep people in the field. Uh, did you want to talk about sure. how sort of capable it might be? Sure. Just like a real low um, budget sort of exploration yeah. technique. And so, so, the question is do we have it for, um, effectively, for, for on site drilling operations? Um, which could be operated maybe by from the back of the unit. Yeah, well, yeah. Soil sampling or games. Certainly, yeah. I mean, the soil sampling for the NMI can certainly be done uh, from the back of the unit. The analysis by uh, PXRF and uh, PNNR could certainly be done from the back of the unit. FTIR, the unit itself is portable enough to be used from the back of the unit. The issue is that you have to um, pulp the sample. So, for that, I would probably go for a mobile sample preparation unit to give consistent results. You could utilize it with a mini mill, um, but it would increase the potential error because the, the, the pulp does have to be ideally 80% passing um, 75 microns. More questions? Well, thank you to everyone for um, attending today. And if you have any questions that you want to ask um, after the event, then please feel free to do so. Thank you.